Hi guys, welcome to Sebo Auto Season 3, brought to you by the GT Channel Network. So down at EBC Brakes with Gareth. Hi guys, That's nice me. to meet you both. Uh, welcome to uh, EBC Brakes, Global Distribution Centre and Head Office. Um, I'm Business Development Manager. Uh, I'd like to take you guys just for a quick tour around the site. Uh, if you've got any questions, then just fire away. Awesome, awesome. let's go. So, how long have you been working here for the next? Uh, just a little under two years. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, get to do, deal with people all over the world. It's not just limited to um, dealing with people in the UK, so makes it uh, makes it interesting, makes it a challenge. Obviously, it's a great company to work for, so um, yeah, really good. Why is it moving away from gold credits to the black ones that we see here? Uh, it's, a, it's a move that we decided to uh, implement, which is off the back of uh, changes in governmental uh, legislation, uh, mainly from the US, but various other countries around the world. Um, the change to black discs basically means that the, the discs have a more of an anti-corrosive property to them, uh, they're more heat resistant as well, so the life of the disc is extended, uh, and obviously you get more, more value for money. Okay, oh, I didn't think that was the case, so it won't be too long until all the discs are black. As well? Uh, it may be some time actually. Um, EBC obviously has thousands of discs in stock, um, some which move very quickly, in which case they are, the zinc coated discs will pass through um, EBC uh, a lot quicker than, uh, than some of the other slower moving discs which aren't so popular. So for very popular vehicles, um, we've probably already got black discs in stock for some very slow moving products. Um, it could potentially be a couple of years. Um, wow. So this being your global distribution centre, how far afield do you supply stock to? Are you planning on expanding to have more centres like this one in the future? Uh, I mean, we actually sell through distribution, so um, our customers have their own distribution centres essentially, but um, we, we, we virtually supply to more or less any, any corner of the globe you can think of, um, from North South America, uh, all over Europe, uh, Asia, Middle East, Australia, um, even some small countries that you've probably never heard of before, but um, but yeah, we, we literally cover everywhere. Um, there are plans to expand the site that we're at now um, at some point in the future to accommodate more products, but um, that's a little way off. Yeah. enjoyed the tour around the site. Yeah. I hope you found it interesting. Oh, yeah, um, there's a couple of uh, free sets of our product that uh, I'd like you to test. Uh, just let us know how you get on. All right, awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Cheers. See, See you soon. soon. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. to need are. To begin things off, you need a flathead screwdriver. This will help remove the spring connection from the caliper to the caliper bracket. Then you're going to need a 7mm Allen key to get off one of the bolts, which you do not want to remove completely. Then you need 17mm socket wrench and spanner. Following that, then one sorted coloured cable ties, which we have to put all of ours together because we don't have one Then just to cut them off. Then need a hammer to get off the discs, especially if they are rusted apart, it's a pain in the back to get them off. Once that's all done, you need to have one of these to put in the piston for the cylinder head. And then of course, you need some awesome discs from EBC, which are grooved to help disperse the heat. 
especially compared to these old rusty things here. You may also find you need WD-40 to go off any rusty nuts or bolts. That is rolled to clean up after yourself. Copper grease to go onto the brakes themselves to make sure when you come to take them off again, they do not seize up. And some Loctite, 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 whatever it's called, to make it so the bolts do not stick. Okay, so you've obviously taken off your front wheel. The first thing to do is to remove this spring clip here. Now, word of warning, this is on stupidly tight. It will fire off, and I really don't need to take out an eye, a leg, or dent your nice car that's behind you. So pretty much, you just got to start working it off, and it is an absolute pain. So James, be careful. And there you go, it hit James. Next thing to do is you've got to go behind the actual brake itself. There'll be two little plastic clips. I'm going to get my torch and it comes in and show you where the first one is. And what we might do is we'll cut to a photo now showing you the back so you'll be able to see what I'm on about. So basically you've got the first one there, which pretty much pops off like that. And then you go pick it up and there'll be one literally on the bottom which is the same type of cap. Using the 7mm Allen key, you now want to undo the bolt both top and bottom. Now to remove the caliper and brake pads. That literally just pops out like that. That's the that is the old one. Gently tap out the brake pads if they are seized. Cable ties. Cable ties are used to tie the caliper to something sturdy to keep it out of the way. With the 17mm at the front or 14mm at the back spanner or socket wrench, undo the caliper bracket bolt. Okay, so you may find that this is pretty much stuck on, as you can tell. There is no zero pain in that. So, you want to give it a few knocks with a mallet or a hammer. Say goodbye to the disc. Well, that looks completely different to the other side. Copper grease is then applied to prevent future issues removing the discs. From here, it is a simple process of reversing the removal of the components, starting with the bracket, brake pads, and then the caliper itself. At this point, you need to compress the master cylinder using blue joint pliers, while at the rear, you'll need to use needle nose pliers and turn the master cylinder in a clockwise fashion. For this, you may find it easier to open the brake fluid reservoir and put a cloth in to release pressure and absorb any overflow. Before refitting the wheel, you want to use a dial indicator to test the lateral run out. 
this number should be between 0 and 0 0.08 millimeters. If you are unsure on how to carry out this test, contact your local garage. That's the brake installation complete. This is how it looked before and after. So that is how you replace the brakes on the Mazda 3. I'd like to thank James and especially Gareth down at EBC Brakes for accommodating us. And if you want your own sets, check the links in the description below. Please remember to comment, like, thumb up, whatever you do with this video, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next video. Ta da! Now this successful video. Yeah, this is the first episode. Well, we haven't walked off and we've done something stupid. No. Yeah. I love a cup of tea. <laughs>